I'm gonna show you quickly in 10 minutes my workflow for a VFX shot, how I made this. All right guys, so here's the footage we shot vertical with me using my cell phone, nothing super special. Now, the first thing in our pipeline here, I'm using this really cool poster from, uh, I forgot his name, Peter something. I'll have the link down in the description if you guys wanna check his channel out, fantastic. He's got this VFX pipeline poster. So the first thing here, I got my video. I need to turn my video into sequences, into like PNGs or anything other than just straight video. I ended up just jumping straight into Blender. I went to video editing, go in here, load in your footage. Once your footage is loaded in, you're gonna need to set your dimensions. Make sure this is important. It needs to be exact. I was at 1080 by 19. 20 frame rate, super important. Don't mess this up. My frame rates were set to 30 FPS. If you look at it, it looks wonky here. So what we do is click on the footage, press R90. It rotates it, boom. Now it fits right in there nice and perfect. From here, I would export my sequence out. Make sure you go down to your output, set your folder, change this from MPEG video, put it to whatever you want, but I use PNGs or JPEGs. Go to PNG, boom, there it is. And we're gonna set out our sequences. Go ahead and render this out. Once you're finished, close Blender. Do not start tracking with inside of this file here. Close Blender, boom. So our next step, we already completed this here. We prepared our sequence. It's done. Now we need to go set our shot up in Blender. All right, I got my video imported inside of here. Let me turn this stuff off here for a moment just to say like we just brought this in for the first time. I'm not gonna go through the actual tracking process in this video. If you guys want that, let me know down in the comments. I can cook up a tracking video just for you guys. What I ended up doing, first thing is I come in here, I switch this to cycles, and then I go and set my, my settings again. Make sure we're matching our settings. 1080 at 1920 FPS, 30. Once I have that set, I go over here and I also change film. Make sure transparent is selected. Trust me, that will screw you in the end. Color management, also sRGB stand. Once I have all of that in, I will go to my tracker and now we need to figure out what kind of track do we need to do? And you're like, what do you mean what kind of track? Let's go back to our chart here. So we've got our file set up here. We got our clips ready. Camera movement. Now we need to track. So we have a perspective change, a nodal pan or static shot. Static means the camera's not moving. Nodal pan means the camera rotates in place. Camera movement means you actually moves around and it moves in place. So basically you're moving shot. So in my case, if we were to look at my footage again, my footage, I'm kind of just standing still and just pivoting around like it was on a tripod. For my case, it was a nodal pan. So a nodal pan here, it says like we can go to FSpy or we can go to Blender Tracking. In this case, I went to the Blender tracking route. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and track our footage. The settings that I used for a nodal plan, especially we're doing 1080, let's go to tracks. I went to tracking settings. I set this to blurry footage. I checked motion model. I selected perspective because it is gonna be a slight perspective angle. I turned on correlation to 0.9, which means like these trackers are gonna be 90% sure that they're solid. Got that from CJ Matter. I started tracking my scenes. And what I typically do is I'll go to the beginning of the scene. I'll hit detect features, cram a bunch of tracks in there, go to the end, hit detect features, track it backwards. And I'll go to the middle, hit de detect features, and then go back and then in the middle again and detect features. So just ramming a whole bunch of tracks in there. After that, I'll do the cleanup, basically going in, cleaning up all the tracks that are like really high numbers. And here's our dope sheet. We got fives. Uh, I got the highest one here is a five, not 0.5 but I cleaned up all my tracks after that. Again, I'm not gonna go through all that to do here by going to clean up, you go to errors, hit your, your number. I want all tracks that are over a five, delete them and then we'll can clean up tracks and keep going and keep going. I got that down to a 0.7 on my tracking solve error. From there, once I got my track completed, I go ahead and set up the file, hit set as background, set up tracking scene, set my origin and then set my floor. And then once to that, boom, I will have this. Here's my floor and all my tracking scenes. So I'm gonna jump into my layout scene, turn on all my trackers so I can see all my trackers. And there it is basically. And you can even see it's not even really lined up to it, but it's not that crucial when we're doing a nodal pan. Future me guys, I forgot to tell you this. After you got your track done and got your error down, click on setup background, track setup scene, and make sure you click on your camera, go to camera settings, and then down here, you'll see this camera tab, tab on that and switch it from auto to horizontal. Your track will line up. If you don't do that, your track will not line up. Peace. 
Then what do we at next? I'm next, I recreated my scene with my ground plane, import my asses and animation. So what I wanted to do was I brought this clip, this uh, cloth simulation. I did it in a separate file. I did this. I'll have the link down below where I found uh, the channel to do this, which was a really cool little tutorial. Copied it, pasted it inside my project here, recached it, and there it is. I've got this animation brought into my tracked file set up the ground plane i needed to do a collision modifier on here which i did and then everything else is recached it and that was good so i got my asset in next i need to import an hdr match the intensity and the direction and the saturation of the light and recreate scene lighting in this case for me it was a really overcast day so there really wasn't no, too much direct sunlight it was like i said very diffuse lighting so what i ended up doing was just adding a big nice diffuse light here and then i added an hdr in the background and that was pretty much it as far as lighting i just tried to keep the light as soft as possible to try to match again match my scene here and it really matched very good in the viewport from there after we've done that we go ahead and render out our sequences now what i made the mistake of well it wasn't a mistake i knew i just didn't want to do it because i was being lazy in this case you should really render out your 3d asset by itself meaning no background just to render the 3d the cloth simulation and then take that cloth sensor uh simulation and either bring it back into blender and use blenders compositing i'm not a big fan of doing after effects i learned node based stuff so i don't even go back which i learned in davinci resolve which is a free software where i should do is export out my 3d sim bring it back into davinci resolve do composition basically set my levels my color offsets my saturation and my blur and do all my masking in davinci this was originally just practice so i kept everything inside blenders compositor here's my blender composite and one thing I basically kept the whole setup and all I did was I added on the foreground, I added a, a, a curves, a hue saturation and a brightness control and a blur. Right. And that was just to try to get the CG to fit into the scene a little bit better. After I did that, the one main thing I do here, which I learned from uh, doing some nuke tutorials. Once you understort your footage, you put your CG elements inside. Then at the end, re distort your footage with your CG inside of it. Here is my distorted footage which after when I did before I did the red, I had this all connected here, redistort it, undistort it, put the CG in and then redistort it. And that just really integrates the CG a lot more better. A lot of people don't do this. So here you just literally go from undistort back to distort and it will redistort it. So I did that. And once that was complete, masking. And I ended up doing the masking inside of da uh, DaVinci Resolve. And the reason why I did the masking in DaVinci Resolve was because there was one thing I did need to mask out and that was right here in the shot at the end here, this flaps over and literally before the mask, it was literally covering that because this is just video, right? So I had to mask this out, this little cone out to make it look like it's sitting behind it, right? And look at that, that makes a huge difference. So I did that in, inside of DaVinci Resolve. And while I was there, I did a bunch of sound design. And then that's pretty much how I put this whole shot together. Let's recap the whole steps here again. This is a fantastic little poster here and this is a great way to uh, workflow. Prepare your image, take it from video to make it to sequences. I did to PNGs, set up my blender file, came out. Once I had that camera track, what kind of motion movement was in the track? Was I moving around? Was I just standing still and pivoting? Or was it a static shot? For me, it was a nodal pan. So I went straight in here to blender, tracked my scene, recreated my scene geometry, which for me was just a ground plane, which was really easy. Brought in my asset, which was the sim cloth sim. Imported my lights and HDR to get the lighting to match. Rendered everything out. And I actually rendered everything out together, but typically you should do it by itself for, for the most control. And then you'll composite your stuff in DaVinci Resolve or Nuke or whatever. And then set your levels, color, saturation, blur and then add your masking. Any objects that are in front of the CG should be masked out. And then your final render, boom, and then you're done. Congratulations. That was my quick little test using this worksheet. Using that poster for my, my workflow and it works out really well. Total time, it probably took this about an hour to two hours for the do because I had to wait for actually the rendering time. And plus I was working and stopping and working and stopping. But it was a fantastic little practice session. If you guys want me to do something more in depth and broken down, let me know down in the comments and I can do that. Keep rendering. Hope you guys get better. Blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs>